Okay, so this is a hard problem from your homework. For those of you who were with me after school, I saw the mistake. We just didn't carry over a square, which is to say the ratio between the radii was to the fourth power, not the square. But everything else was okay. Let's get right to it. A fireman standing on a 4.8 meter high ladder operates a water hose with a round nozzle of diameter 3.05 inch or inches. The lower end of the hose, 4.8 meters below the nozzle, is connected to the pump outlet of diameter 4.4 inches. The gauge pressure of the water at the pump is, well you can see, 205.464 kilopascals. Calculate the speed of the water jet emerging from the nozzle. Assume that the water is an incompressible liquid of density 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed and negligible viscosity. The acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Answer in units of meters per second. Okay, so to be more time, time efficient, I wrote down all of our given and this is the best I could do for the little truck, okay? And one thing to note is we were given the diameters for both parts of the water hose. And the only thing we have to do is also the change in height, as you can see from the, from the numbers, from the problem, is 4.8 meters, okay? And I'm showing that over here. Also, we need to find the velocity at the nozzle, so it's here. And because we're going to need to use cross-sectional area, we need to have the radius and not the diameter. So what I did is I just divided the radius, sorry, the diameter by two to get the both radii, okay? The N will represent nozzle and the P will represent pump. Whoops. Sorry. So here is the pump area. And here's the nozzle area. And to solve this one, we're going to need Bernoulli's principle because we have a difference in height. We have two different places from where water is flowing. And you can think of the nozzle as a constricted section of the pipe or of a pipe. So let's write down Bernoulli's equation. And normally we have pressure one plus kinetic energy of fluid one. I'm going to use N for nozzle and P for pump. Okay, so we have the pressure at the nozzle plus one half density velocity at the nozzle squared plus density times gravitational acceleration times height at the nozzle is equal to pressure at the pump plus one half density velocity at the pump squared plus density times gravitational acceleration times height at the pump. Okay. So our goal is to find velocity at the nozzle. And before we do that, I'm going to move this term to the right side so that I can have the height at the pump minus the height at the nozzle, okay? Which, because I wanna know that's the difference in height, correct? That's the difference in height. So let's do that. I'm gonna subtract this on both sides. And now on my right side, I can factor out rho and g. Hopefully you saw my mistake that I labeled this with the p, another p. It, that was my mistake. It should have been an n for nozzle. And because of the order that we have for the heights, so 
Let's go back to the drawing. If we make the height of the pump, let's make that zero. That would mean the height of the nozzle is going to be 4.8 meters. Okay? That tells us that in this case, the difference in height, it's going to have to be negative. Okay, so let's make that correction. The difference in height is going to have to be negative. Okay? Let's keep working to solve for velocity nozzle. Okay, the problem now is that we have two different velocities. We have the velocity at the nozzle and the velocity at the pump. Ideally, we should only have one of them so that we can do algebra and solve for velocity at the nozzle. To do that, we're going to apply the concept of flow rate, okay? We know that flow rate is constant, therefore, the velocity, sorry, flow rate at the nozzle should equal the flow rate at the pump. We can now apply the equation for continuity and we'll get that area at the nozzle times velocity at the nozzle is equal to area at the pump times velocity at the pump. By area, I mean the cross-sectional area because we have a pipe or cylinder, well, it's a, it's a water hose. The cross-sectional area would be a circle. Before we take that into account, let's solve for velocity at the pump. The reason why we're doing that is so that we can express velocity at the pump in terms of velocity at the nozzle to then plug it into our Bernoulli's equation. So let's divide by area at the pump so that we can isolate velocity at the pump. I'm going to use the reflexive property, which means switch size. And then I'm going to have the ratio of the areas together times velocity at the nozzle. Again, because we have a circle, this would be pi radius at the nozzle squared divided by pi radius at the pump squared times velocity nozzle. The pi's cancel. And then I'm going to simplify this as follows. I factor out the square so I don't have to write a square in the denominator because that gets hard and tedious. And there's a, well, I mean, there's, there's not a multiplication sign, but we multiply the ratio squared times the velocity at the nozzle. So now I'm going to use this and plug it in into my Bernoulli's equation here. Plug it in, plug it in there. And it'll look as follows. I have to copy it to remember the equation because man is long. Be very careful of having the square, this square, outside the parentheses because it is this square over here. Okay? We're squaring the velocity at the pump and the velocity at the pump is this. So the square should be outside of this expression. So be careful. That, that's what I did wrong after school. So now we'll distribute the square to get rid of the brackets.
So the ratio between the radii went from a square to a power of 4, right, by the laws of exponents. And now we can rearrange this equation so that we have all the expressions with velocity nozzle on the same side. So although I could move whichever one to whatever side I want, I'm going to move this expression, because that's, that's one thing, that's one expression, to the left side, okay? I'm going to subtract that whole thing. This will cancel. And then we're going to subtract the pressure at the nozzle to move it to the right side so that we only have expressions with velocity nozzle on the left side. I'm using the copy feature, so this is not as long as a, as long of a video. Okay. Now let's factor out one half rho and velocity nozzle squared. That's present in both these expressions. And that's what we want because we go from having one, sorry, two velocity nozzle squared, what, yeah, two velocity nozzles. That sounded weird. Two of these into one. Okay, let's solve for velocity nozzle. The first thing we'll do is get rid of this thing because of the brackets I'm multiplying. So to get rid of that, let's divide by that whole thing. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. Okay, let's get rid of that one half. We multiply times two. So I'll just put a two here to make this a little faster. The two and the one half canceled, as we said. So now we have to divide by density. So it just goes over here, dividing. For the sake of time, I'm just going to erase. Well, I'm going to show how they cancel, and then I'm just going to, no, you know what? I'm just going to copy the thing. And I'll just get rid of the rows here. There you go. So now we got to take the square root on both sides. And that should give us the expression, the equation for velocity. Okay, there's one problem though, okay? One problem. We don't know this, and we don't know that. We don't know those pressures. What can we do about it? Let's go back to our very first Bernoulli's equation. One thing we have to keep in mind is that the pressure at the nozzle, the one we sit here, this is absolute pressure there. Likewise, the pressure at the pump happens to be the absolute pressure here. Because the nozzle is open to the atmosphere, the pressure at the nozzle here happens to be the pressure from the atmosphere. Okay, and we can use that relationship because we were told that the gauge pressure, this number here, is the gauge pressure, sorry, is the absolute pressure at the pump minus the pressure ATM, which is the absolute pressure at the nozzle. Okay, L let me show you how that is going to work. So we were told that the gauge pressure at the pump is equal to the absolute pressure at the pump minus the pressure from the atmosphere. Because the nozzle is open to the atmosphere, so we can say pressure nozzle ATM, 
atmosphere. Sorry, absolute, not ATM, absolute. My bad. Is equal to the pressure from the atmosphere. Therefore, we can say that the gauge pressure is equal to the pressure at the pump minus the pressure at the nozzle. If you look at what we have in our equation, that's exactly what we have. I, these are absolute pressures because of Bernoulli's equation. Okay, I don't, I didn't write the ABS, but these two are absolute pressures. So we have what that difference is. We know exactly what this number is. Is that 205.464 kilopascals? So now, just to show you, I'm going to copy this one. But I'm going to replace that difference between the pressures with the gauge pressure at the pump. So that means this difference becomes pressure at the pump gauge and we have that number okay and the only thing you have to do is convert your kilopascals to pascals which is just multiply times 1000 in my case I would just move the decimal three places to the right side and let's write down let's plug in our numbers to see how this would look be careful to include that negative sign for your delta H. That's very important. So we, here we have it. Now let's just plug in our numbers. And there you have it. That's the velocity of the water at the nozzle. I'm going to round to two decimals. So 20.19 meters per second. If you're doing quest homework, don't round. That's it.